Well, hey all, and welcome back. And I wanna do something a little different this time. This is kind of a, this is a laid back video where I can kind of share some stuff with you guys, what's been going on and uh, kind of open up some stuff that me and my kids picked up when we were on a trip to California. At the beginning of the year, we went out to San Francisco and San Jose and we checked out the Redwood Forest and all kinds of stuff. Got to go see the ocean. Lots of awesome things to see. Honestly, I'd love to live out there if it wasn't for, I don't know, the cost to live out there, but the weather's awesome and there's so many great sights to see as far as nature and of course, plenty of toys. We stopped in the Pop Mart there in San Jose and that was really cool. Um, I picked up a bunch of stuff, my kids picked up stuff. This is something my daughter got there. This is a set of street style figures my daughter got, just figure I'd show to y'all. But she wants to keep it in the packaging. I also got some things in the mail on the way back. The F-92 Master Grade, and I got it for the upcoming L-Type armor that I'm gonna be very excited to do a review on when it comes out. And I also got this from New Type. I got the Gundam Epion, which I wanna build. And of course, a bunch of decals. These are for my perfect grades, so I'll finally build them. And lastly, I also ordered that kit, which I might do a review on. I've just not had a lot of time to build right now, and I've just been building the main stuff I've been getting from Show Z and any kind of really cool new thing that just isn't getting a lot of coverage. All right, as we open stuff up, I'm just kind of chat about some things. Here, I picked this up at a Goodwill, and it is from Five Nights at Freddy. It's like some sort of glam rock thing. It's missing the back, but it's a brand new figure. They actually had a pile of them. And it just seemed like something fun to pick up. But what I was trying to get into, I just want to talk about the channel some. So you may have noticed in some of my uh, my recent videos, I've been trying to raise the production value of things. I uh, I used to edit with iMovie, which is actually a pretty decent program when you're in a hurry. I've had all the Adobe products for, you know, decades. And I'm like, you know, might as well start using Premiere and After Effects and, and making things look better. I'm still kind of working out the bugs with my audio. Um, I'm gonna continue to see how my editing goes and if I can improve it. If not, then uh, what I'll most likely do is, what I'll most likely do is either buy a new microphone or come up with some sort of solution. But with this guy, we have a couple faces here. They're not too terribly different, but we have one that looks a little angrier than the other. The other figures kind of mix and match. I just thought this was kind of neat, um, even though I've never played the game. And the faces go on there. Eh, I, I kind of dig this. This is a Funko product. And uh, for, you know, a couple bucks, I think it's pretty cool and something to mess around with. I may pick up some of the other ones, but as far as the ones I saw there on display, this was probably the best one. But like I said, I'm trying to raise the production value, trying to make this channel uh, a lot better, maybe do some higher profile reviews, uh, get more stuff come in. I'm, I'm translating things into many languages now. I kind of looked at the metrics of who watches the channel and uh, I was surprised that most of my content actually goes to the Philippines. I've always done like subtitles for Japan, China and, and South Korea. However, my biggest audiences are actually from Philippines, Vietnam, things like that. So I'm translating for those viewers now in hopes to, uh, you know, better service them. Plus anyone with hearing impaired or any kind of conditions, I just think it's good to have features that help those who may not be able to enjoy media because of whatever afflictions they have to deal with. Coming from the user experience world, Coming from the user experience world, uh, we, we try to do that sort of thing just to accommodate everyone. And it's something that everyone really should be doing. And I'm going to try to do my part to make sure that I'm taking the little extra steps to make sure my content is accessible uh, for more than one party. So this is, I was at a, a Mitsua, I believe. And the one in San Jose was not near as good as the one in Chicago, uh, or San Francisco, I can't remember where it was exactly. And uh, it, it, they didn't have any Gundam, and I mean, it was fine, and not as much food and stuff. The one in Chicago is actually really good. Uh, and there's this really cool bookstore that I cannot pronounce. 
and that was also there but it just it just didn't have as much stuff as far as what i like to get and even though they did have this this gashapon section which we don't have in chicago and i thought that was pretty cool that you know me and my kids we went in there and we all, we each got some gashapon and i only got this one um i don't have the ones on the display here i actually did post a couple of pictures on instagram the one my son got um but yeah i just thought this was cool the ball itself the canister is pac-man's head and you build them we've got some decals here and probably should do this off camera but we're just taking it easy hanging out talking about toys and i don't know maybe maybe i'll do some live stuff in the future we'll kind of see how this goes because sometimes you know my, my viewer my viewership is really spotty some things will, will take off and go crazy and then some things i post just my audience isn't into and I like to just review what I like. Uh, I don't try to, to chase numbers. And so you might see something that might not be your thing, but then other times it is. I, I may, uh, if anyone wants to sponsor and send me toys, I may do more of that sort of stuff. But I buy all this stuff myself. It's my collectibles. Uh, Show Z is the only one who's given me any kind of sponsorship. Lately, um, and that's every now and then, but I still get my own stuff, the things that I, I want. Mm. So yeah, there's Pac-Man, it looks pretty cool. I dig them. The sticker's okay, it's not my, I think that's probably the weakest part of this, but it's still a pretty cool figure. And this is something, this is actually my daughter's, uh, because I got one a while ago of a different animal, uh, actually when I was in Japan last year, and uh, I let her borrow it to store her faces in. And so now she's gonna give me mine back. So she will have this one. Um, but they're, they're storage cases for Ninodroid faces. Usually you put them in a bag and all it is is just a little plastic shell of a cute little creature. And when you put the face inside, it's like they're wearing a costume. And I actually, uh, I kind of want this for myself, even though it's pink. I guess I'm going to give it to her, though. It's hers, and I'll get mine back. But this one actually is better than mine. I think mine was a shark. Um, but this is super cute. Definitely, if you're into Ninodroids, these are worth picking up, and they have a whole variety of them, just as something to store your faces in. But, yeah, I just want to talk about the channel and where it's going and some of the things that's been going on. So I'm, I'm working a lot more now. I'm doing... I'm doing uh, video production for university. And so that takes a lot of my time. And a lot of time that I don't have for reviewing and editing toys, but I still wanna keep the channel up. And one thing that I definitely wanna do is kind of expand the channel for what I review and what I do. So what I typically was doing was reviewing toys. And most of you don't know, but I actually used to have a toy store. That's that's where this all started. Nori Toy was originally a art toy store and I carried rare like third party robot stuff. And I expanded it into screen printing and it, it ran for a while. And what actually ended up happening is my web server had an issue for my store. I really like that one. I like to get that one. I think this is super awesome. Um, and I, I shut things down for a while, thinking I was going to just learn how to do it myself. And working full time, I was art director at a publication and it just it just didn't happen. And here we are quite a while later and the store has been closed for a long time. And I still review toys, but the whole point of reviewing toys was to kind of support the store and... Even though I love collecting toys, there's other things I want to talk about and do. And I also, real for a while, I worked in game dev, uh, development. I was designing and doing production in mobile game development. And actually, last year I worked on a title that's still in production. That has to do with emulating the brain and attaching it to a game. So that's not, that's not the story. This is actually the science. They're doing development for 
whole brain emulation and we're building a game to promote it. But I, I left that project I worked for a little bit before I started working at the university. Uh, this is a janky. I've always wanted one of these. I like them. I think this one's pretty cool, though I really rather have the main character. But this reminds me of some other Metacom stuff I have. So anyway, I try not to be too all over the place, but I'm, you know, I'm opening toys and trying to maintain a conversation. We'll see how well this succeeds. Uh, so, and if you have any questions about any of these toys, just ask in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. These are mostly art toys uh, that I picked up at a variety of places. Oh, you know what? Okay, so this is Emma. And this one's pretty cool, though I do wish I got the Native American inspired one. So anyway, uh, I, you know, I was, I'm an artist, I'm a designer, game dev, that's all still a passion of mine. And I want to continue doing that. And so I haven't actually made a game for Nori as a college project. And I'm wanting to jump back into that. I'm thinking about doing some new engines. I used to work in uh, Unity and some proprietary stuff, but I'm looking at Godot and everything else after all the drama that happened last year. If you're not if you're not familiar with it, uh, Unity kind of changed their pricing model and a lot of people left them. And it, it doesn't, it's not something that affects everyone, but it is something that is definitely an issue uh, if you are a small shop that is like free to play or something like that. And it's, it's 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 a model that hurt a lot of people and they kind of walked it back but it did cause some issues so hands on the factory i love these guys i always want more this one's actually for my son though he really wanted that one so yeah i want to i want to bring in doing uh not only toy stuff but i want to you know make toy stuff i have some i used to do a lot of customs and i um also have designed stuff and come up with concepts to go for, you know, everything from Trexy and Dunning, whatever. And even though nothing's gone into production, I would definitely like to release some of that stuff um, on my own. Maybe make some low run items. Yeah, I love these. These are always great quality. Uh, this is pretty cool because it has two sets of shoes and he can hold one of the other ones. So you have the option to switch them out and display the other. So that's, that's uh, I didn't expect that, but that's pretty cool. Another thing I kind of failed to mention is I redid my booth. And here's a couple of pictures. I, I was using uh, cloth backdrops, which were meant for photography, and they would get dusty and they're always wrinkly looking. And so what I did is I got a sheet of plywood and I wet it and bent it. And you can see here some of the pictures of what was involved. And I enjoy woodworking and I might do some more of this sort of stuff, probably not for the channel. But like I said, I'm gonna do more stuff, maybe on game development, maybe follow along as I try to make my Nori game over again. Something called Punk Bear I run across. This is kind of heavy. So I'm assuming it's got metal content. Um, art, toys. So not just reviewing other people's stuff, which we'll see how much I'm doing of that, but actually making stuff, designing it, maybe doing, uh, I just picked up a, a new resin printer, um, doing limited production figures if I can. We'll have to see how that goes because I am super busy with work and I want to make sure I'm spending enough time with my kids and self-improvement, exercising, you know, Keeping up with those New Year's resolutions of losing weight uh, and being healthy. And so I'm doing all that all while... Let's see, how's this closed? Have we not opened this? I don't know if I know what that one is, but we do know what this one is. So, yeah, all that sort of thing. I love me some little Bebe. He is such an awesome character. And I, I know this is not my typical kind of content, so you'll have to bear with me. And I don't even know how much attention this will attract because we're kind of focused on random, you know, art toys over doing uh, a, a feature on a specific 
model kit or figure line. I will say my art toy content tends to be on the low side, which, except for any of the stuff like uh, running horns and things like that. Those usually do all right. But I'd say my model kit stuff, when I do kind of the more rare Chinese kits, kind of performs well. Uh, and I, I'm actually really into these now. I like Gundam, but these Chinese kits that have been coming out have really nice, unique designs. We're not seeing the same mecha over and over again, seeing a fresh take on it. And I like doing those. And I, I seem to do those fairly early compared to a lot of places. And I try to be thorough with that sort of thing. And then... Art toy stuff just doesn't pull. I do want to get back into my builds, though. Um, my Mugen Bind builds. Those are actually my my best performing videos of all time. But with that said, they're just not as popular anymore. Um, when I was doing them in the beginning, it was a unique thing. But now, people are not really searching that as much. But I still want to do it just because I like to focus on this concept of using toys to be creative as a means of developing um, anything from concept design or whatever. Because say, for example, Le Lego is a good tool for this, but sometimes having things with limitations, like having a, a figure that uh, has shapes that are hard to utilize, because Lego is pretty versatile, but when you're using Mugen Mine, you're kind of stuck with these blocky shapes, very Zord-like. And limiting yourself with design forces you to be more creative and even though you're not using the design you made as the source you're using the silhouette you do create some interesting things in that respect so this little baby doesn't seem to come on usually I do oh I, you know what those those plastic containers uh, that were in the packaging those are to combine and these rest inside but i i love some little baby these are great i'm i'm glad this character has blown up. Um, I, you know, I just I just love these. I, I've got some other reviews of their products, like the Lego set. You might want to check out if you're a fan of the style. I might even start doing more front-facing videos. I actually did one back in the day. I was reviewing an upgrade for the NES. But I actually have another channel uh, where I built a race car, an old GT4. And if you want to check it out, I'll put a link in the description. But on that channel, I'm always in front of the camera. Uh, it's just here, the focus is the toys, so you usually see the toys. As I start doing other content, I might sort of expand that a bit more. Oh, and we keep on going. Keep looking at these awesome minifigures. I picked these up. These are like little Korean shops that were in um, San Jose and I know I'm sorry, San Francisco. This was in Japantown, but there were some shops that were kind of like definitely Korean and some Japanese shops. And they had these art centers you could do, but they had all these glorious minifigures all these cute great designs i really like these and they would let you like if you didn't get the one you wanted you could trade for one that was on display and so i got lucky but i you know i, I some of these i wish i bought more um and i they might be kind of hard to look up i might have to look some of these up and, and try to get more because these are just awesome um if you're here for the robots it's not everyone's cup of tea but i like all sorts of things so this is my son's, he likes animals. And this was a cool series where it's like fruit that's an animal. And this, I guess was, uh, it's, not the, it's not the chase. I'm curious what that chase is, but there's all these cute things on here. But it is a lime whale. And the quality is super heavy. Um, the quality is really nice. It's got some really authentic texturing that makes it really feel I mean it resembles the fruit so this is pretty neat not not something for me but I think it's pretty cool uh, I can appreciate some designs even though I might not necessarily want it in my collection personally but I I can appreciate I can appreciate the cleverness and another one so this one's actually not mine this is my son's but it is a little baby toy so you can charge it and Let's see, how did this work? How did this work? Is there a button on here? Okay, so I've got this. 
Oh, there's a little switch back here. Hold on one second. Oh, it's just hard to see. So we have a volume button here, or mute button, and the power button. So we push the power, and yeah, it may not be charged. Anyway, he dances. You can see when I move him, his hat wiggles, his feet move. And I, I like this a lot. Um, I just didn't want it for myself. And I and since, you know, one of the nice things about having kids that are also collectors, they can get it and I can enjoy it on their shelf. I don't have to I don't have to own it myself. I can just go check out their stuff and it's sort of like getting to visit someone else's gallery. And speaking of galleries, that's something else uh, I want to do a video on. I have been collecting for a long time and uh, I want to do a tour video of my collection in the near future. This is another thing my son got. He's really big into Pikmin now. But yeah, I want I, I want to go over sort of my collection. I don't know what, how in depth I'll do. I'll, I'll at least do some sort of like video tour, maybe throw some music on it. If you're all interested in that sort of thing, you can give me a heads up of what you'd like to see. Um, if you want to hear commentary about maybe a handful of pieces that I've collected and why I got them or why they're important. Because I, I kind of treat it like a museum. That's one of those things. Oh boy, this has got a lot of pieces. Uh, you know, it's, it's fun hanging out here. Let's save this one for last because what I might do is build it off camera. Just so you guys don't have to hear me ramble on all day. So this is something I'm excited to have gotten as well. This one actually, uh, I ordered while on my trip. But it, it had to get mailed to the house because the store didn't have the one I wanted. And I found it on AliExpress. But this is the year 3024. The All-Star Series. And I have wanted these one of these Finding Unicorn figures for a long time. And I don't have any. Uh, and finally, I saw one. I'm like, this is one I have to have. And look at that. I love that. And I actually have a Lavit that I think this would go perfect next to. He's got a busted space helmet. This is a this is this is a really quality piece for the price. Like I, when I saw these in Mitsua, they were like twenty five plus dollars, and I thought that was a little high. I think I got this for like twelve on on AliExpress. And honestly, this is definitely worth a fifteen or twenty dollar piece because if you look at all the coloring and different materials, it's not just one solid piece of vinyl with whatever. This is layered. This is facets of components that had to be assembled and painted. There's different tones. It's got a gradient going on. This is okay. This this is an awesome piece. This is gonna be up here on high on my list. Um, I'm really excited about this. And uh, I guess it, they they have a little stand in here so they can stand up. Yeah. Oh, I'm really happy about that one. And through the power of editing, uh, I went ahead and assembled most of it. And uh, you know. Even if you've never played the game, this is actually pretty cool. It's it's a little dark. Um, we have a little Pikmin getting eaten by this creature thing, and another one, I guess, running to help him, and another one attacking this one. So, uh, yeah, definitely a little not what I expected, but um, I still I still like it. Uh, actually, I actually think I used some of that upside down. So this is going to go like so. And then we're going to take this other piece and clasp it over here. I guess we can adjust it that way. And just like the Pokemon ones, these are, I think these are pretty well detailed. They're, they're not cheap, really, but uh, I think it's pretty cool. So this will go on to keep that together. And then there's one that goes on the bottom. I like, I like how clever the assembly is. And this will rest here. And this will go in here, I guess, as bait. So, yeah, there is a... Uh, little terrarium of Pikmin being devoured and fighting for their lives. So there's your friendly Nintendo <laughs> toy. And there's some other ones in here. I think the light bulb one's pretty cool. I like that it looks like a light bulb. But yeah, these are these are really nice. The quality seems really good. I think I would get more of these. And on to this guy. So this is Oswald. I saw this at the Disney store on clearance. And uh, I, they had a Minnie Mouse. I wanted that one a little bit, but I was running out of space in my luggage. And I, I do wish they had Mickey. I think Mickey was probably the best one out of all of them. But Oswald was definitely a close second. And uh, 
This is by, who's this by? It has a name on here. Eric Tan, who is responsible for other art toys. So I think it's pretty cool to do this. And if you get them all, I guess you can build a rocket. But I wasn't, you know, I'm running out of space. I'm actually starting to list some things on eBay, uh, things I don't really need anymore, just so I can make more space. And uh, this is actually a pretty small figure, considering how big the packaging is. And see, and down here we have parts for the rocket. But the Oswald itself, let's see, yeah, that's just some dirt. It's a really nice looking figure. I like that. Uh, it's got some stuff in there. I'll deal with that later. But just give you guys a look. We have this nice clear plastic over the face, these arms, different pieces of plastic assemble, different finishes. This is really nice. This is something I wish I knew about sooner because it's kind of an unexpected thing from Disney, especially partnering with some uh, actual art toy designers. That sort of thing. Package design is very nice. The figure is very nice. Definitely pretty cool. Now, of course, I have to have some robot content. And uh, this is something some of you may know what it is. Many may not. Uh, it is super rare. And it was surprising that I found it in the dark space of a store out in San Francisco. I've actually owned this before. And as far as I know, and I, and I cannot find the website where I had that data the first time I owned one of these. But there's only like 30 of them. It's from Wonder Festival 2002. It's from Kyoto. And it's sculpted by Yamaguchi, who's one of my favorite toy sculptors from back in the day. This was known as their Robot Museum line. It was released globally painted. This glow-in-the-dark version by Wonderfest is, I, I believe, and I, I wish I could confirm this, but I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, like 30 of them. And I've owned two. And I I had the first one. I sold it a while ago. And, and we saw it in the store. My daughter's like, it's, maybe it's fate. Maybe it's yours that's come back to you. Because I don't know why it was here. I found, I found the first one on my first trip to, to Japan. And it was also in the back of some small store for no one to see. But let's see if we can get this thing to glow. Considering I'd even hold it up to a light. And this is just from the ambient light. It glows pretty well. It's actually, what's funny is it just, it just illuminates the area so for as being as old as this is over 20 years old whatever they made it out of has really held up but that said i'm probably not going to open this i'm going to leave it in the packaging i don't really know if i'm going to keep it um i know i'm trying to clear out stuff and i probably shouldn't have even bought it but i i don't know it just felt kind of it felt kind of like fate so i've got it if i listen i listen if not i'll just keep it on the shelf like i did the other one it is a cool design i the reason I let the other one go is because I have a bunch of really nice Galgagars now, and I didn't feel necessary to keep this one. And so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But it's just another part of my collection. And, you know, well, hopefully you all hung around until now, <laughs> seeing some of the stuff I've picked up uh, and just listening to chatting. And if you're all interested in doing lives or anything, uh, maybe I'll start doing stuff like that. It's kind of hard to, to stay organized and edit. Uh, well, you can't edit when it's live. But it's kind of hard to sort of manage those things. I've not really done a lot of them. Um, and so normally I'll do my content and I'll take a few hours or more just, you know, cutting it together and trying to adjust everything for you all. But so anyway, thanks for watching. I guess like and subscribe, if, you know, if you want to. And uh, we'll see you all next time.